And Sonic didn't produce many sound cards over its lifetime, five to be exact. On this was their first. Well, this card is not actual and Sonic soundscape, but a clone made by SPEA, which was acquired by Diamond Multimedia sometime around the release date of the card, but it's not important. The only difference between Ensonic and this clone is a DAC chip. Actual Ensonic uses analog devices chip and this card uses chip made by Crystal, on that should be the only difference. I can't compare these two, because I don't have the original Ensonic card, but it should be exactly the same, in terms of MIDI at least. I can't compare these two, because I don't have the original Ensonic card, but it should be exactly the same, in terms of MIDI at least. And Sonic fit the card with 2 MB of sound samples for its wavetable, which includes General MIDI and Roland MT32 sound set, on Adlib and Sound Blaster FM emulation. There are three jack connectors on the backplate, mic or line input, speaker out and CD in. And as always, there is a game port right next to them. CD-ROM controller connectors are at the end of the card. First thing I had to do was set all jumpers properly. There are lots of them on the card. I removed jumpers here to disable CD interface which I don't need. Then I set the base port address to 330, which is a default setting for MPU401 or general MIDI driver basically in every game. Then I set wave port address to 534, which is this card's default setting. And finally, I left this jumper alone, since I didn't want to use mic, but if I had a mic with phantom power, I would have left this jumper off. I found two types of drivers online, one for S2000 and the other specifically for media effects. It's practically the same driver. The only difference is when you install them under Windows, one reports Ensonic, the other reports media effects. On the set. However, getting these working under Windows was a pain in the arse. But this is a DOS review, so I'll leave it out. Unfortunately, you need Windows to install DOS drivers, but it's enough just to run the installer, which installs all necessary software, and then you can quit Windows. After that, I booted to DOS 6.22. The installation software hasn't modified DOS startup files, so I had to do it by myself by adding these lines which are necessary for Assassinate, a configuration and initialization utility. To set up the card is quite easy. Hardware section lets you set up addresses, DMAs and IRQs for MIDI and for Sound Blaster emulation, which can be either turned off or on. Address must correspond to how you've set all the jumpers, otherwise it won't work. IRQ and DMA is up to you. If you're not sure that the resources you set are available, run this test. Mixer lets you adjust volume. On the MIDI section, you can choose between card internal wavetable or an external device. After that, you can exit the program which initializes the card, and that's practically it. So, we've just set up the card. Now, what about these features? 16 bit and 44 kHz is a standard with cards of this class. But MIDI is the most interesting part here. You can practically choose between four ways of playing back MIDI music, if the game supports it though. First is the FM synthesis. And Sonic took an interesting approach to FM synthesis. It's not an FM per se, but it's an FM emulation that instead of a chip like OPL, uses its own wavetable instruments. They did it to cut the cost, and because all new games of the time supported general MIDI anyway. In some games, it actually sounds cracking, in others, it's utterly atrocious. Second is Roland MT32 emulation. The cards got sound sets specifically for MT32 emulation, for which you need to load specific driver that makes use of these sound sets. So it should sound very similar to the actual MT32, but does it? You'll hear that in a minute. Third way is also an MT32 emulation, but without loading the driver. Emulation still works, but it uses general MIDI sound set, and it sounds very different. On fourth way, it's simply general MIDI. It's the best sounding option, in my opinion. But I'll let you decide what you like better. Before I show you all the games, let's hear how clean the output is without any sound. And then at 12 dB boost.
Now, finally the games. First, I want you to listen to the difference between those four types of MIDI music you can get out of this card. For this, I use Dune 2, which has real MT32 support. Another example is TFX. Some older games don't support general MIDI, only FM, so you're stuck with this kind of emulation. General MIDI instruments are brilliant. These games sound terrific. I encountered a problem with Miles sound drivers. 
It contains drivers specifically for Ensonic Soundscape. While MIDI music works flawlessly, to make sound working I had to mess around with IRQs, switching them back and forth until I found the right combination. I had a similar problem with Bioforge, but this time music didn't work until I changed IRQ. Unfortunately, there were games I couldn't get to work. First is Flashback. Mini music worked just fine when set to MT32. But sound didn't work no matter what I did. Sounds in Duke 2 didn't work either. Again, music worked just fine, but I could enable sounds only for Adlib or PC speaker, not Sound Blaster. And lastly, Space Quest 1 and Space Quest 5 had problems with sound as well, but these don't work most of the time so I'd only be surprised if they did work. And the rest is just fine. Danny, I trained for this mission and I have work to do in laying the nuclear charges. When I come home, I'll be a reporter and tell you all about it. But during the mission, I'm part of the team and I will obey Commander Lowe like any good soldier. That may be the biggest news story of all. Maggie Robin. Your two worlds will be crushed. Britannia first, then Earth. I shall parade you. It wasn't a torment, no more than our ISA sound card. This is an excellent card that's quiet, has a brilliant wavetable when used in general MIDI mode and works in almost all games with almost no effort. This is one of the best sound cards I've laid my hands on. I wonder how Ensonic Soundscape Elite sounds. Unfortunately, I don't have one. I saw S2000 listed on eBay for £90. Not cheap, but it's not that expensive either. From now on, it will only get more expensive, I reckon. I've also uploaded some soundtracks from this card. Check it out in the description, and maybe you'll like how it sounds and you'll get the card for yourself. Catch you later in comments. You take care. Bye for now.